with all the silver done, we are now going to look at highlighting the red. So to do this, I'm going to start with my fist in red. So we've got the pommel of the sword and the wax of the little uh, oath papers, as well as these little buttons that are on the side of his backpack. So we finished with our Mephiston Red Edge Highlight, and now we'll move on to Wild Rider Red. Okay, so with all the red done, we're going to do a fun little detail here with this little pipe on the back of this guy's leg, which runs from the top to the bottom there. Uh, I'm gonna paint that with hazard stripes just so it's a really cool bit of detail that pops out. So to do this, we're gonna use Irial Yellow for the, uh, for the main color of the stripe. And then I'll try and highlight with Flash Kits Yellow as well. So because it's already black, I'm just going to paint these stripes straight on. Right. So the underside, I think I'm going to take my chap off his base. to give myself the ability to put my brush where the holder was. You can see the detail is just in there. Quite tricky to show on the camera because of the angle. So I'm just gonna put a little dot of this on top of each of those yellow stripes towards the top. So to finish off highlighting the hazard cable there, I'm going to use some Ushabti bone and that's just going to go straight down across uh, the whole cable. You can see there it's basically starting to bead up, so it's basically like water. And just build up a line along the top edge here. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're new to Siege Studios, we are a premium miniature painting service with over 50 artists. Here at Siege, we offer four painting levels, ranging from our bronze premium gaming quality up to our platinum competition standard. For your free quote today, follow the link in the description of this video. Cool, so now we're going to do some highlights of the various parchment and uh, white parts of the model with Pallid Witch Flesh. That is quite a jump up from the uh, current state of those areas but it's going to give them a nice bright highlight. For the parchment papers here, I'm going to do a first highlight with Screaming Skull, and then I'll put some Pallage Witch Flesh on there as well, just because I have a bit more space on here. So rather than being satisfied with one highlight, we're going to try for two. So whilst we've got our yellow here from the hazard stripe, we're going to block in the eyes. So we'll start off with aerial yellow. And now we're looking for a tiny crescent shape uh, from the very inner eye along the bottom. I'm quite 
liking that. So next I'm going to get some of my black and water that down quite a lot. So it's a sort of wash consistency. Probably even more than that. You can always um, use the back of your hand as a sort of makeshift palette. There we go. So I've got a really nice thin black there. I'm going to get most of it off. And then starting from the yellow and going towards the darker top part of the eye, I'm just going to blend that black on. Yep, I can definitely tell now that there's a brighter yellow at one end than the other end. Cool. So, no more yellow to do, I don't think. So I'll just finish that up and make it nice and tidy. And then we can move on to the next stage. So I've just mixed in a bit of Flash Gets Yellow with Pallid Wish Flesh, which flesh, <laughs> to get this kind of really light pastel -y yellow there and apply that to the inner eyes instead. Um, so that's giving them a nice little pop. The final part for the eyes there is going to be the catch light. So for that, I am going to use White Scar just because these yellows are so bright. I need something even brighter to challenge them. So I've got a nice watered down bit of White Scar there. And it's just the tiniest dot, the top right right hand corner for the left eye there we go and the top left hand corner for the right eye uh, while I've got my white sky here I can do some other catch lights on the gems and things so we've got this, uh, well not gems, but we've got this button here. Just getting the tiniest little dot on there. And we've also got some lights on the weapons. So just kind of the opposite side to where your brightest highlight was. Add a tiny dot. Well, there we go. So I think that is all of those. Excellent. So now we're going to neaten up this stripe on top of the helmet. And I'm going to do that with a bit of Screaming Skull. I flipped over my wet palette because I'd used up every tiny inch of space. So this I'm going to put on pretty thin. Right, so now that I've got the screaming skull on nice and solid, I'm going to add pallid witch flesh. So again, this wants to be nice and thin. I'm actually going to go all over this. because I realized that that Screaming Skull was just too uh, dark. It's like a cream color once it's on properly. That nice solid layer of Pallid Witch Flesh, we're gonna do some White Scar highlights. Along 
the edges. I can start with this nice clear one on the top vent or crest. So we're getting close to the end now. I'm just going to go around and get all of the rivets, bolts, buttons and things with this uh, Vallejo model, uh, metallic gunmetal. Don't want it running anywhere. Right, so onto the sword, we're gonna use Stegodon Scale Green to create the power glow on the little power node there. So this is gonna be essentially a wash or a shade. So we're gonna paint this straight onto here and dragging the paint down towards the node there to show that that's where the power is coming from. And this can kind of go across all highlight lines. So I'm gonna keep building that up and then we'll come back with the next stage. Okay, so we're doing the next highlight now, which is Sotec Green. I've got it thinned down a fair amount here. And that is just going to go on closest to the node to show that it's sort of emanating outwards from that point. So I'm going to finish off with a little bit more of that and then we'll come back for the final highlight. So for our final highlight on the sword, we're going to use Baharoth Blue. Don't need much really. And I'm only going to thin this down a little bit because it's just going on top of the power node there. There we go. And with that, I think the power glow is basically done. Cool. So we'll move on to the final stages. So I've glued the head on this chap and he's looking very close to being complete. We've got some script to do on parchment though. So to do that we're going to do a mix of Rhinox Hide and Black. We're basically just going to do squiggly lines across the surface and dots. Cool, and that is looking good. We've got those oath papers done. So what's left to do now is the lava base. Okay, so for our base, we're going to use three colors, Mephiston Red, Troll Slayer Orange, and Luganath Orange. And we're also going to use the Technical Mordant Earth. So that's gonna create our sort of crackly and we're going to start with the base of Mephiston Red. Um, I'm going to thin this down just ever so slightly. Cool, so I'm going to shore up that coverage and I'll come back for the dry brushing. So now that our Mephiston Red base is done, 
we're going to move on to Troll Slayer Orange. And we're sort of going to dry brush stipple that on. So now that our Troll Slayer Orange is done on there, you can see it's quite bright. I think the trick to this is get some nice solid color on there. Uh, next we're gonna do Luganath Orange. And we're gonna kind of break up the patterns here. Oops, that's a bit too much on there. So I'm aiming towards the edges of some of these patterns I've already made. Right, so I'm gonna keep going with this until I'm happy. And then we'll come back with the fun stuff, which is the Mordant Earth. So the next step is a little hack just to get the technical paint to kind of grip to the surface more, which is to use a bit of PVA glue, basing glue. You only need a little bit. And we're going to thin that down with some water. Go thinner than that and just apply that all over. So next up is our gloss varnish. And we only want a tiny bit of this. I've literally put two drops down there. I'm going to water it down as well. It's got bits of dry from ages ago, so that's fine. There we go. And I'm just going to put a layer of this all over the top, being reasonably gentle, because I don't want to disturb the PVA layer, although that should really just be dry now. Okay, so our gloss varnish has dried. You can see there's a nice little sheen to that. Uh, I've switched to an even older, even rubbisher brush. Um, so this is just going to be ruined, sort of. Although this stuff washes off fine, if you do it soon enough. Uh, I'm gonna give it a good old shake. There we go, that should do. Right, so I'll just use this straight from the pot. All right, so I think that is almost there. As you can see, we've still got some bits which look like they haven't quite dried, but uh, if we leave that for a while, those will hopefully dry up nicely, uh, crack a bit more, and then all we need to do is tidy up the rim, and that one will be done. And there we have it. The Salamander's Lieutenant is complete on his lava base. I've just put a spray of satin varnish over the top of that just to protect the little bits which can come off. But yes, we are finished. Thanks for sticking with me there, guys. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, I know it was a long one, but and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and got some good techniques out of it. If you do have any questions, please do just get in touch. And until next time, I've been Ben for Siege. And take care and have a good one.